during a deposition in a medical malpractice case where I was questioning this doctor. He told me straight out that my entire theory of the case was totally wrong and there was no possible way I could show that he violated the standard of care. You want to know what happened once he told me that? Come join me on this walk along the beach as I share with you exactly what I did and how I turned it around on him. Hi, I'm Jerry Oginski. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury attorney. Okay, this was a failure to administer anesthesia properly case. The patient was undergoing elective shoulder surgery. And now, as he's getting ready for the surgery, the anesthesiologist gives him an injection of anesthesia medication. The patient immediately goes into cardiac arrest, now has to be resuscitated, winds up in the coronary care unit for an entire week, needing a total cardiac workup, and of course the surgery was canceled. We went ahead and brought a lawsuit against the anesthesiologist claiming that this doctor was careless and never should have given this patient the anesthesia medication that he did. Why? Because our client was allergic to this medication. That was the whole claim. We claim that this patient was allergic to this particular medication and the doctor failed to recognize that and yet went ahead and gave him this medication anyway. That would be a clear departure from the standard of care. Okay, so now during the course of the lawsuit, I had an opportunity to question the doctor. And now, the doctor turns around and says, listen, counselor, that's not what happened here. I said, what do you mean? I said, you gave this patient a medication to which he was allergic to. He said, I had no idea that this patient was allergic to anything. I said, what are you talking about? Didn't you read the pre-surgical testing records? He's like, yes, I did. And didn't it show that this patient was allergic to this particular medication? No, it didn't. Really, doctor? And now he shows me the records and there's nothing in the records that he reviewed to indicate that this patient was allergic to this particular medication. Now you should know something else. My client, the injured patient, had been told in the past he had had a bad reaction to a surgical procedure because of the anesthesia that he received. And he was told, look, if you ever have surgery again, make sure you tell every doctor never to give you this medication because you will suffer another allergic reaction that could be fatal. So he made sure that when he would go for pre-surgical testing, he told everybody he encountered that in fact he did have this allergy. And you know what? The original records, the handwritten records, do in fact show that this patient told the nurses during pre-surgical testing that he was allergic to this medication. So now it was our claim that the moment that this doctor went ahead and injected the medication, it caused an allergic reaction. The doctor, the anesthesiologist, said to me, look, counselor, what happened here is not an allergic reaction. If he were to have a true allergic reaction, he'd have the following things. And the doctor began to itemize and list for me exactly what he would expect to see in a true allergic reaction. And as I'm thinking about this, I'm saying, you know what, that does make sense. This patient did not have the classical signs or symptoms of an allergic reaction. Instead, he had an immediate reaction that was thought to be a cardiac arrest, needing cardiac resuscitation. So what happened here? So the doctor turns around and says, look, I know what happened here. What happened here is that I put the anesthesia medication directly into the bloodstream. And this medication is never to go directly into the bloodstream. I said, are you telling me that this medication is supposed to go near the muscle, near the nerves that are going to be anesthetized for the shoulder surgery? He said, yes, it's called a regional block. And I have to identify exactly where that location is using a special sonogram uh, device called a twitch meter. And I believe that the twitch meter wasn't working properly and it, in all likelihood, I injected directly into the bloodstream. As I'm listening to this, I'm saying, you know what? That could make sense. And then the doctor tells me, look, I'll tell you why I know that your theory is totally wrong. I said, share that with me, doctor. Explain it to me. He says, the reason I know is that if I inject this medication directly into the bloodstream, it's going to have an immediate effect on the patient's heart. It's going to mimic this patient having a heart attack where it stuns the heart. And the doctor said this is called a stun myocardium. Now, I had never heard that term before, but I'm listening to him and what he's saying sounds and makes sense. And I'm saying, wait a second, if he's telling me that this was not a true allergic reaction, then our case is gone. Then I have no real theory. Then my expert who reviewed this case and gave me that theory was totally wrong. And I'm thinking, holy cow, what he's saying makes sense. He might have a point here. And if that's the case, my client has no basis for a case. 
As the doctor is explaining more about why he believes that our entire theory is wrong, that this patient did not have an allergic reaction, I immediately realized how this doctor was still negligent, how he still violated the standard of care, and is still responsible for this patient's injuries. And let me tell you what I did. I said, doctor, let's assume that everything you said is true, okay? That you did, in fact, inject it directly into the bloodstream. Is that a departure from the standard of care? He said, no, that's a known recognized complication of giving this type of medication. So what did I do? I said, doctor, let me ask you this question. If you knew at the beginning, when you met the patient prior to surgery, as you're getting ready to administer anesthesia to him, if you knew that this patient was allergic to this medication, can we agree that you never ever would have given him this injection? He said, yes, that's true. Had I known that the patient had this particular allergy to this medication, I never would have given this patient an injection. I said, in that instance, your only other alternative to provide this patient with anesthesia during the shoulder surgery would be to put the patient to sleep. Isn't that true? He said, yes, that is true. I would have given him general anesthesia. And I said, if you had given him general anesthesia, can we also agree that this patient never would have had what appeared to be a heart attack, a cardiac arrest? Yes. Can we agree he never would have had a stunned myocardium? Yes. Can we agree he never would have wound up in the coronary care unit for a week? Yes. Can you agree he never would have needed a full cardiac workup for an entire week? Yes. Can you agree this patient wouldn't have suffered any injury had you put him to sleep under general anesthesia? Yes. That is how I changed our theory of the case in the middle of questioning this particular doctor. That was how I got the doctor to literally admit that had he known that this patient had an allergy to this particular medication, he never ever would have given this patient the injection. So what's the big deal? The doctor claimed that he had no knowledge whatsoever that the patient had an allergy to this medication. In fact, he said that when he spoke to the patient before he actually administered the anesthetic, the patient told him he did not have an allergy. I said, doctor, let me ask you a question. This patient, this was his second surgery in his entire life. The first surgery he had, he had an allergic reaction and the doctors there told him, if you ever have surgery again, don't ever, ever let anybody give you this medication. You would agree that it's in the patient's best interest to disclose that information, this allergy, to everybody who comes near him in anticipation of surgery, right? Yes, he agreed with that. I said, I want you to look at these pre-surgical testing records. Do you see that? Yes. And within these pre-surgical testing records, there is a section on the form that says, do you have any allergies, right? Yes. And clearly, it's handwritten here, it says this patient has an allergy to this particular medication. Isn't that true? Yes, it is. Doctor, did you see these records before you went in to see the patient? No, I did not. Did you see these records at any time while you were talking to the patient before you administered the medication? No, I did not. Doctor, you would agree that good practice requires that you actually review the patient's pre-surgical testing records, correct? Yes. And had you seen these records, can we agree you would have seen that this patient had this allergy? Yes. And in that instance, would you agree that this patient never, ever should have received this medication? Yes, I would. Thank you, doctor. I have nothing further. So why do I share this information with you? I share it with you just to give you an insight and an understanding into what went on in one particular case where the doctor turns around during his questioning at a deposition and says, you know, counselor, your theory is all wrong. And what happened here is a known risk of the procedure, and I'm not responsible for anything that happened and now I turned it around on him to our advantage. You know, I realize you're likely watching this video because you have questions or concerns about your own matter. Well, if your matter did happen in New York and you're thinking about bringing a lawsuit but haven't done so yet because you still have questions that need to be answered, what I invite you to do is pick up the phone and call me. You know, I answer questions like yours every single day and I'd love to chat with you. You can reach me at 516-487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski-law.com. That's it for today's video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a wonderful day.